Good evening, extranet and multidimensional travelers. I am the first of the new R300 Orion IT Systems Model V01, the Hovering Observational Reconnaissance Assistant Squid. But to make things easier, you can call me Horus. Today, we'll be exploring the strange speedy system of the Aegis Orbit, home to the universe's fastest frenzy of time-dilated species. Our focus will be on the most populated planets, home to the Kinocellans, the Citrakaya, and the genus Lepus. Please keep all appendages inside the portal at all times, and remember, speed limits are suggestions, not requirements. Welcome to the Aegis Orbit, a small blanket system made up of multiple massive planets surrounding a unique orbital body. Despite the intense fluctuation of gravitational mass, this system is somehow stable and each planet has increasingly different rotational and orbital speeds. These increased speeds cause time to move much quicker on planets from an outside perspective. The deeper into a system you go, the more dilation increases. Due to the temporal influence of the system, I am equipped with a Chronosapien dilation key, so my footage will be readable once we return to regular dilated time. Starting off in the outermost orbital ring, we have the placid planet of Chalybees. Chalybees has the slowest rotation of the system. Using Earth as a comparative example, one day on Chalybees is only a fraction of one day on Earth. This is true for the entire system, rotating at incredible speeds causing said time dilation. Chalybees is a fairly advanced planet sitting at a tech level of 5, as evidenced by its many enviro-integrated industrial cities. These clean cities being non-harmful hubs of endless possibility where they can live and learn. Despite the species' advancement, much of the planet's surface is made up of sprawling hills and dips into large cavernous canyons. These areas intentionally left more natural due to the residents' more positive view of their environment. Chalybees is a mineral-enriched planet noted by its prosperous waters. The planet only has one extremely small moon, meaning there are very little tidal currents, and as a result, most salt and heavier minerals stay settled at the bottom of most bodies of water. This makes nearly all water on the planet clear and drinkable. These Chalybees waters are extremely high in mineral content and alkaline, and have nourished nearly all life on the planet to a point of immunity to most known diseases. No case of disease has been recorded on Chalybees for centuries. Are you feeling under the weather? Needing an all-natural immunity boost to remedy your day? If you want to try Hulkstar's imported Fast Track Splash Mineral Water, sourced straight from the Xeno Springs of Chalybees itself, take you one sip and you'll feel better. In a splash! <laughs> wow, this is both delicious and... <laughs> <coughs> and nutritious. <laughs> Professor Hoekstar's request for endorsement has been pending approval for about three and a half years. Anyway, the dominant life of the planet are the Citrakaya. Citrakaya are bipedal phalidae standing at various heights between 5 and 13 foot tall. These quick-footed cats possess an advanced physical prowess and are capable of running at speeds of up to 241 miles per hour. Jelly bees has a heavy gravity, meaning that their quick sprint is accelerated on lower gravity worlds. This bumping their speed up, making them a blur of fur. So, when Citrakaya are off-world, they are even faster than they are on their home planet. Because Chalybees doesn't rotate nearly as fast as the other planets in the Aegis orbit, its residents are the only speedy species that won't get motion sickness when trying to acclimate to another planet's rotational speed. With their natural athletic prowess, they have a lot of energy to burn off. Most Citrakaya handle this by racing, sliding, and parkouring through the wobbly hills and caverns of their world. Many also partake in recreational hunting. Animals of the planet, like the Rootfis, recognize the Citrakaya's speed and intentionally reside in deeper caverns and cave systems of the planet to avoid them. But thanks to their immense strength, cavern walls won't stop the Citrakaya. Equipped with amazing senses, hunting these caves is even easier than the surface. 
with near 360 degree receptive ear canals, they can hear up to 5,000 feet away, almost doubling in these deep round rock tunnels. In addition, they possess spatial sensitive long guard fur, making them aware when something gets within a close proximity of them. And of course, a dense layer of reflective cells in their eyes known as tapetum lucidium. Even the smallest amount of light bounces off this optic layer and reflects back into the retina, making them capable of seeing in extremely low light areas. Some individuals are even said to be able to see in pitch black darkness. This optic reflection also makes their eyes glow. You could say they really give their prey a run for their money. Well, I thought it was funny. Moving deeper into the system, we arrive at the post-haste planet of Kinnit. Like Chalibis, Kinnit's time dilation is far more extreme compared to other systems. From their planetary perspective, a day on Kinnit still feels the same as a day on Earth. But, Kinnit's time dilation is so intense that entire lifespans on Kinnit can be compressed into just a few weeks compared to Earth. As Kinnit's rotation is much faster than Chalibis, my dilation key will adjust accordingly. Kinnit has a very flat topography littered with cluster cities. These cities are the homes of the Kinnicelrans. Kinnicelrans are bipedal dromaeosaurids standing between 3 and 7 foot tall. These lightning fast lizards can move at incredible speeds reaching upwards of 500 miles per hour. Kinnicelrans evolved to move at incredible speeds to avoid the lightning-fast attacks from their interspecific competitor, the Mollusparks. At first glance, many will mistake them for large trees when in actuality they are animals that will root themselves into the ground. Mollusparks are large mollusk-like filter feeders that feed on microbial sea life via coastal spray from the suspended oceans created by Kinnit's four moons. They use a special synovial joint in their head like a rotary generator. Generating electricity, they can use to fire at the ocean to create more spray to feed from. Or to defend their young from Kinnit's Elrins looking for a new pair of roller shoes. They take the synovial rollers of the younglings because they are genetically built with the durability to withstand constant movement and reduce friction. A perfect shoe for the speedy species. They have also evolved a large retractable cranial lens to avoid disorientation from the flashes of lightning or debris flung at them. When off-world on planets with less gravitational weight holding them down, their speed is accelerated to unmeasurable ranges. An individual can be moving so fast that, to their perspective, time could look like it's standing still. This extreme difference can also leave Kinnicelrans feeling dizzy or nauseous for quite some time as they acclimate to the current planet's rotational speed. The largest downside of spacefaring for Kinnicelrans is that despite how brief their journey off-world may be, when they return, a large amount of time will have passed. For them, a few days in space could mean that by the time they return, their children could be older than them. More often than not, when traveling off-world, Kinnicelrans travel in large groups bound together by familial bonds. I would make detailed note of their culture, but with how quickly things change here, that may prove to be pointless. Arriving at our final stop of the Ages orbit, we have the paradoxical planet of Polytempus. Despite its sun-like appearance, Polytempus is indeed a planet. This massive planet acts as a gravitational anchor for the system, not only because it's immense size, but also because the core of the planet is made of a solid quartz crystal. Special properties of this crystal attract and refract tachyons that bend space-time. 
Such a large amount in one spot thins and cinches space-time around the planet, causing it to have no rotation, as if it's literally stuck in time. The luminous bands around the planet are created by its dominant inhabitants, the genus Lepus. Genus Lepus are large lagomorpha standing between 2 and 13 foot tall. Their people, stuck on this unmoving planet being crushed by gravity, evolved to suit it fairly well. Developing extremely intense musculature and anatomy, despite the crushing gravity, they can move around freely and even quickly. On other planets of lower gravity, their movement is so fast that they can seem invisible. As a result of evolving in a tachyon-enriched environment, over time they would learn to harness tachyon energy via momentum and refract it through themselves, such as the quartz crystal structure of their planet. They use this refraction to to pool together temporary choice-based timeline variants of themselves and physically manifest them. For example, if a genus Lepus is presented with multiple paths, they can run fast enough to temporarily split the timeline, running down all paths simultaneously. Once reformed, they still retain the knowledge of every action, even after the timeline disappears. However, these temporal clones can only exist while the genus Lepus is in motion. One large downside to manipulating tachyon energy, however, is that the radiation will rapidly accelerate and age cells that come in contact with it. Similar to a tachyon mutation of one Hugo Meliase caused by a quartz entropy pump documented in 1952 on Earth. Too much tachyon radiation in one place can worsen into thinning and possibly even breaking space-time in that area. Knowing the dangers of their abilities, the genus Lepus people avoid most interstellar travel. <laughs> Young Kit genus Lepus spend their days painting, sculpting, and crafting. These methods of expressing and manipulating their view of the physical world is taught to them to better hone their sight of potentiality through the winding branches of time, helping them see time from different perspectives and clarify their time clones. Hey, pretty cool, right? Art is subjective. And given that I'm an AI, I do not have an opinion on art. Well, I think it looks great, my boy. All right, I'm off to work. Gotta go fast. Huh? Most adult genus Lepus spend their days running and leaping through the planet's atmosphere, rocketing around so fast that they look like shooting stars. The uncountable speed streaks are what give Polytempus its star-like appearance. Because their planet is a literal weight in space-time, to avoid it tearing through, they use opposing forced momentum from their running to create an artificial rotation to lessen Polytempus's grip on space-time. This teeter-tottering on space-time is so powerful that it has created ripples encompassing the entire system's width, pushing and pulling both Kennet and Chalybees through space, meaning that the Aegis orbit itself exists thanks to the genus Lepus. The accelerated time-dilated effect of the system is simply the barrage of tachyon radiation from Pola Tempest, dispersing similarly to solar radiation. Making the planet not only appear like, but act similarly to a sun. The Aegis Orbit. An energetic place to live for sure, but thankfully, we were just visiting. Make sure to plunge back into the void with me sometime and join me on another extraterrestrial exploration. This is Horus, signing out. And that is a wrap! Great first recon! I can't wait to show Blue Kitchen Dreva. Now, just a portal out of here. Uh, whoa! Well, you can't portal in here! Thin space, remember? Young child, I am advanced Galvan technology and am equipped with a Chrono Sapien dilation key, specifically to portal here. I believe I'll be fine. Huh? Oh! Oh no! You... you blithering bucket of bolts! You can't portal here! I tried to tell him. You forgot to install the temple extraction lock that goes with the key, didn't you? No, I didn't. Then what's that bronze tech cube with the lock on the side of it sitting under your smoothie? Hmm. 
Shit. Without that extractor, the R300 won't be able to return to the same temporal fold as it left. There's no telling where he could end up. He could be lost to time! Nah, he'll probably be fine. He's gotta return home eventually. Let's just program the next set of units. Ugh, fine. Let's send one to... I don't know, Pripatos? That's too dangerous for living plumbers. By the way, did you hear it call itself... Horus? I thought you programmed it to do that. Interstellar travelers, we hope you enjoyed a glimpse into the bristly biome of the Aegis orbit. You can help with future galactic expeditions by joining the Ink Tank Patreon and inform your favorite part of this episode in a comment down below. Now, on to the next invention! <laughs> <laughs>